Joining me now, MSNBC science contributor Lori Garrett. Lori is also the author of The Coming Plague and dean of Brown University School of Public Health, Dr. Ashish Jha. Thank you both very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. Dr. Jha, I will start with you. And I want you to listen to something that Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida had to say when asked about um, mask mandates. Have a, have a listen. It really shows a callous disregard for the physical, emotional, and academic well-being of our children. Very soon, I'll be signing an executive order, uh, which directs the Florida Department of Education and Department of Health uh, to issue uh, emergency rules protecting the rights of parents uh, to make this decision about wearing masks for their, for their children. Uh, we think that that's the most fair. Dr. Shah, I would love your, your response to the governor. Also, listening to that, knowing the headlines out of Florida yesterday, yesterday, Florida reported the highest number of daily cases to the CDC since the start of the pandemic, more than 21,000 new cases of COVID-19. Yeah, so Jonathan, um, thanks for having me back. Uh, the way I look at this is yesterday, Florida had more cases than the entire United States did in the beginning of the month. So mm -hmm. Florida really it is a hot zone right now, one of the highest rates in the country with a lot of people getting infected and sick and dying and, and really no end to sight of, of this outbreak in Florida right now. So this is not the time to be uh, putting in policies that prevent further spread. Uh, look, I understand that masking up kids can be controversial in some places, but the bottom line is when there are large infections happening, large number of uh, infections happening, uh, kids need to be masked up indoors. And that's what we should be doing right now. Uh, so I don't totally understand why the governor is doing this, but it's going to be bad for the people of Florida. And Dr. Jha, let me get you to respond to something, another piece of sound. And this is President Biden um, being asked about the latest on the vaccine. Have a listen. In all probability, by the way, we had a good day yesterday. Almost a million people got vaccinated. About half a million of those people for the first time and for the second shot. And so I'm hopeful that people are beginning to realize how essential it is. And of course, he was talking about restrictions, not, uh, not vaccine. But my question to you, Dr. Jha, is to um, when the president said in all probability, when asked um, if we should expect more guidelines and restrictions, from your vantage point, should we be uh, gearing ourselves up for more restrictions? Well, I'm hopeful not, Jonathan. To be perfectly honest, if we can ramp up vaccinations, which are starting to happen, uh, if people can put in some common sense activities like masking up indoors in hot zones where infection numbers are large, I really think we can turn this around. We've seen that in the UK. We're starting to see that in Israel. Uh, it's really about vaccinations and, and slowing down spread in hot zones. I don't know that we need a lot more public health restrictions, and it's really up to us in terms of what we do over the next coming weeks that'll mm -hmm. make the difference. All right, Lori, tell us what you think. Jonathan, I think that everybody's underestimating the biology here. We have a really, really tough form of the virus that has uh, mutated in multiple sites compared to the prior forms of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. You know, the original Wuhan strain that first slammed us uh, way back in January of 2020, what had an RO, mean a reproductive rate, the number of people that would get infected by a single infected person of about 2.5. So in other words, the epidemic doubled constantly. Mm. This one has an RO approaching eight so why is everything out of control in a place like Florida? Because anytime you congregate without masks, without adequate protection, you're looking at any infected individual statistically potentially infecting eight other people standing around them. Now you add to that that this virus also produces about a thousand fold more viruses in your nose and your mouth, which makes you a super, super spreader unlike anything that we've seen before, except very isolated cases with prior forms of the virus. Now, what this means is that even if you've been vaccinated, you're not being exposed to the random puffy little you know, cloud of viruses. You're getting Niagara Falls coming at you. It is a massive dose of virus. And for many people, regardless of vaccination, if you're not wearing a mask, 
you're in danger of getting infected and of being a transmitter, spreading virus to others. You might not have any symptoms whatsoever. You have no idea that you're carrying the virus. You've been vaccinated. You think you're a good citizen, but you may have billions of viruses in your nose and your mouth that you can spread to others. And so the, the, the goalposts have been raised on citizenship. It's not enough just to say I got vaccinated or I have a mask in my pocket. And if somebody wants me to put it on, I will. We have to really think that every single one of us has a duty to protect everyone else around us. If you're going to go in a congregated space, you need to wear a mask. Laurie, given everything that you just said, you, you need to wear masks. So I take it that you are 100 percent behind mask mandates. What is your view on vaccine mandates? Should the federal government, should the Biden administration come come on, right on out and and mandate that all Americans get a, get the vaccine? Well, legally, the administration can't do that. Okay. Mask regulations, public health law is a local function in our country. Uh, but certainly it's inexcusable for healthcare workers to continue to expose patients and be exposed themselves by patients um, and refuse vaccination. I wholeheartedly support efforts to mandate vaccination within the health system, within the nursing home system. Uh, you know, there has to be some really serious education efforts done in fire departments, EMT, police departments, where there is really strong refusal to get vaccinated right now. And these are people who uh, have vowed serve and protect. How can you protect if you potentially are carrying billions of viruses in your nostrils and in mm -hmm. your mouth that go right into other people's faces with common conversation? No shouting, no coughing, just conversation.